Good morning to you. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour. It is a Wednesday, middle of the week, and it's the 12th of May, uh, halfway through this week so far. But Brittany thinks of it a different way. Brittany, good morning. Hey, good morning, Todd. It's not quite yet day four of the hostage situation, but, you know, we're getting there. It's fine. We'll be okay. We're going to make it through because this Friday is a very exciting day for all of us here at HCC, yeah. so we're going to gear up for that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we're talking about our commencement ceremonies. So It actually big. starts tomorrow, though. We have a couple of graduations that go on tomorrow. The VAST and I believe the Text Chase are happening tomorrow. I believe they're happening Friday, but you know what? That's cool. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. I'll check it during the show. <laughs> well, you know what? When we take a break, you check it and, and let us know. All Will right. do. So, uh, but before we get into today's show, I do want to remind everyone to take a moment to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave a comment and a like on all of our videos if you already haven't done so, and hit that notification bell so you can be the first to find out the latest uploads from us. And before I turn it over to Todd, while I go research about our commencement ceremonies, uh, be sure for our audience to share this podcast so not only we can grow our audience, but just share this great information to those who are not following us here on Facebook. So, Todd, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to do a little bit of research and I'll be back. Okay, and I think you're also taking your pup to the bathroom as well. So I was going to leave that detail out of here, but right. thank you very well, much. Let's just be real on the show. Okay, Brittany, <laughs> we'll check in with you uh, shortly. Um, we've got uh, a lot coming up in the show. We want to feature another one of our students, but this one is still here and about to move on. She's among the first graduating class of the Honors College at HCC Southeast. And of course, this day, we usually spotlight gamers for our digital gaming and simulation program students. Students, but today we'll feature digital animation trends. Uh, first, we want to introduce uh, Leslie Trujillo, HCC Southeast Honors College graduate and a St. Thomas scholarship recipient as well. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Leslie Trujillo. Yeah, we're looking forward to hearing from you. I'm going to ask you to stand by. We'll be with you shortly. And first, I want to introduce Jackson Lau. He's the vice president of Bouncing Pixel. We want to talk with you, Jackson. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here this morning. Hey, how's it going? Tell us a bit about Bouncing Pixel first off. Well, Bouncing Pixel is an interactive studio. Uh, we do everything pretty much you see on screen um, from animation, 2D animation, 3D animation, motion graphics uh, to uh, creating apps, uh, website, and games. And you are the vice president, but what all does your role entail? Well, for me, I am um, the coffee maker in the morning. <laughs> and then also, um, I am the animation director here in the office. I also do the work myself. Um, I, I don't like to just tell people to do the work. I like to get, in, get myself into the pipeline. Um, and, also, I, I just lead a team of the um, animator and artists. Tell me what type, you talk about animation projects, where does your animation used for and who are some of your clients that you work with? Uh, Baylor is one of our clients. We do a lot of uh, research project for them. So we do a lot of uh, training material, um, well, educational material for, for, for them. Also, uh, we work with Rice University. We created some um, interactive um, STEM program um, for them. Right. Um, for fifth and sixth grader. And also, a lot of people don't um, know we do this, but we do a lot of educational um, training video for oil and gas company. So a lot of it sounds like a lot of industrial, a lot of ed educational uh, projects that you work on. A lot of our students are animation students um, working to get into this field. And the first question they might ask is, what type of software are you guys using? Oh, we do some wide range of software, uh, but mainly the um, Adobe Suite is uh, what we use for motion graphic animation. And, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, you know, you can't really get away with those. Uh, for the 3D side, uh, we mainly use 3D Studio Max. Um, that's one of the, probably one of the oldest um, animation right. software. 
I know when you have your own business, you get a you 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 take the clients. You certainly take as many as you can, and not all the projects may be the most engaging or the most fun to work on. But they're necessary to keep the lights on and keep the the funds rolling in uh, to keep your your place operating. Maybe you can tell us how do you treat projects when ones are are certainly a lot of fun to work on, but when the ones that are a bit tedious, a bit monotonous, but you got to make them perfect. How do you handle that balance? It's good on my row. I get to give it to other people <laughs> when I don't like the work. Uh, but, you know, we're trying to make every project engaging. Um, I think entertainment, um, making a project entertain is, is our utmost priority. Uh, we try to explain that to our client. Um, when you have a boring project, boring subject, we're trying to make it fun. Um, you know, we did some um, training video for a client of ours where we um, had to talk about um, anti-corruption. You know, it's not a very good subject that, you know, that people would like to take for their employee. So right. before they told us that, you know, their, their return rate is um, 25% when they have to watch a video, regular video, and then they have to read some um, material and then do a test. Um, but once they turn it into animation, they have a 95%, you know, completion rate um, on the first email blast. Right. So animation really help, you know, bringing something very boring into something a little bit more entertaining and more easy to digest. When you are dealing with a client and you produce a project, this is something we deal with at HCC TV all the time. Mm -hmm. We produce a product we hand it to the client to look at, and then you have several rounds of revisions. And a lot of our students at Workforce, you know, thought, well, I did it right the first time. What are they asking for? And sometimes the client changes their mind. What advice do you give to your artists or team on your staff when you're working with a client that wants revisions, they have to be done, but then again, your artist may take it personally? Well, I don't think that anybody should take the work personally. Um, the client pay for the work. And a lot of time the client pay for the revision. Um, right. And at the same time, we have to be a little bit open-minded. At the end of the day, the project is there. It represents the company. Um, so um, I, I see a lot of artists that we hire, they, they tend to marry to their work. And I told them to always just take a step back. This is not for you. Right. You know, so you sort of have to um, just listen. And then also there's way to prevent, you know, a, you know, big changes from happening. Uh, one thing is to really hold the client's hand from the start, you know, to the end. Um, you know, you can do that with, um, you know, leading down, uh, just explain to them the pipeline in the beginning and then um, kind of, you know, do your storyboard. Right. Um, do your preview animation, do your animatic, you know. Um, you show them every step of the way um, then you can prevent a lot of changes. And we always tell our, cl our client, um, you have to give us a finished script. Once we go to the recording studio, we can still make changes, but it's gonna cost you. Yeah. But we explain a lot of that um, to our client because um, you know, renting a studio for audio is gonna cost money. Um, you know, hiring a voice actor, $750 a day, Right. You know, um, you bring them back, you're going to ask for the same thing. So, you know, the client going to have to pay for that. Right, right. You just got to make it clear in the beginning is the what the manage the expectations, I guess. Correct. You when when you cannot make changes. You right. Know, once you pass through the storyboard, you make the preview animation. That's it. You know, we are locked on. How many people do you have working for your company or do you hire contractors on the outside as well? Uh, our company, we do not con uh, we do not outsource any work. Wow! Uh, so you do it all in house, huh? Yes, yes. Because um, our client come to us uh, because of the quality of the work. Wow. It's, you know they don't have to worry about project not getting done, and I don't want to worry about you know last minute when the project cannot be done because I outsource it. Yeah. So we we keep it uh, in house and we do the work here only. Uh, we have uh, five artists and uh, one copywriter and then also uh, five programmer and slash designer. And what do you look for when you're, uh, when you've got a, a new student or somebody that's coming to work for you, what do you look for in their portfolio? Um, character, I want to see, 
you know, what they like to do. I, I don't like to see a boilerplate um, portfolio that, you know, the teacher asked them to do. Um, you know, they're good at doing 2D animation. Um, that's all I want to see because um, I see a lot of portfolio where they put some work that I know that they're not proud of. And right. when that happened, um, I judge them on the bad work that they put in because to me, um, they don't know what is good and bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. Some people are not strong in 3D. 3D is a very hard um, things to do, but then they will put some really bad 3D animation with some really bad camera move. And then, you know, to me, it's like, oh, you can't really judge, you know, good and bad, then you, you shouldn't be working here. And, and it's not just here. I think that should be for the entire sure. industry. We want to only, we only want to see, you know, what you're capable of and what, and not what you're lacking. So it might be better if a student shows you their best of work as opposed to their whole body of work, just to fill the folder. Correct, correct. I mean, I think that a 3D, uh, 30 second, really good animation, better than um, they put in an extra two minute, 30 second of work that is just okay. Yeah, yeah. We've been talking with Jackson Lau. He's the vice president of Bouncing Pixel. Jackson, we want to appreciate, we appreciate you joining us on the show. And uh, if folks want to learn more about Bouncing Pixel, we'll put a link to your website, information on your company in the social media post for the show. Thanks for being here and inspiring our students. All right, thanks for having me. All right, we are going to move on talking to uh, one of our students who's about to move on from HCC. We're talking with Leslie Trujillo, HC Southeast Honors College graduate. Good morning to you, Leslie, how are you? Doing good, good morning, how are you? Great, we're doing great, thanks for being here again. Tell us about uh, your journey at HCC and uh, we'll get to where you're gonna be going shortly, but tell us about the journey. Yeah, so I was actually born here in Houston, but raised in Oregon. So people are always pretty shocked. They're like, whoa, you came all the way from Oregon. I actually have family living here. So after I graduated, I went ahead and uh, came and transferred to HCC. It was kind of a last minute thing. Um, while I was at HCC, I was able to be a part of student government for all of my four semesters here at HCC, serving as secretary as well as a president uh, position. And I was also able to join the Honors College while being here. I know um, it says you 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 mentioned you you got some aspiration to go on to law school, but do you see any uh, political career in your future maybe as well? Would you be interested in that? Yes, I do think about it so much. It looks very challenging and it can be stressful, but um, I actually thought about doing that maybe in the future after I'm done with the, the whole law degree and everything. I do plan to probably run for a public office. Good, because we need some good people in public office. So we need we need some new some new blood up there. Um, let me ask you this: You know, last year all of our lives changed dramatically with COVID, and you know, as demonstrated by you being at home and I'm broadcasting from the house, um, we're we're doing things virtually now. How did the whole COVID virtual learning affect your school and work life? I want to say that it affected my school life as far as being able not to communicate with my peers anymore. Um, I liked having that interaction, being able to uh, talk with other students and having to go on to a whole environment, virtual environment uh, was challenging. And I mean, I didn't, I wasn't able to, you know, have online like actual video, like as we are now with my peers. And that was definitely difficult as far as my workplace. Um, I was able to work virtually from home. So that's a good thing. I'm, yeah. I'm still working. So I'm happy that I was able to still have that opportunity. Um, but that's that's it. That's really how I was affected by it. And I'm pretty sure many people were as well. Absolutely. What, well, how do you, what do you think is your biggest accomplishment while you were at HCC? I want to say being a part of the honors program. Um, I want to thank Dr. Holland for giving me the opportunity to join our cohort. Uh, when I graduated from high school, I never received honors diploma or anything. I, I graduated with a regular diploma, so it was a, definitely biggest accomplishment through my academics. Um, you would definitely see a huge growth in that. So that was definitely one of my biggest accomplishments. And let's talk about uh, scholarships because uh, you're about to uh, head off to University of St. Thomas. That's the plan. I'm still applying to Rice. I already finished my application, so I'm going to be here back on them. 
But as of now, I'm definitely leaning towards St. Thomas. I'm very excited. They offer great uh, pre-law requisites that I can take before transferring to a law school. So I'm really looking forward to transferring there as well as I did receive two scholarships. I received uh, one for my GPA as well as uh, being a part of a Phi Theta Kappa. Would you be looking at going to law school here in Houston? Um, I actually haven't really looked at law schools here in Houston. I'm thinking of Ivy League school. That's definitely what I want to awesome. go for. Um, it can be hard, but hey, it's, I mean, anybody could do it. And as long as you try, you can make it. What type of law do you think you may be looking into? Uh, anything that piques your interest? I think about criminal justice. I have like three, but right now I'm thinking of criminal justice, if not corporate law. That's definitely something I'm interested in. You know, a lot of uh, our students may be struggling right now. You know, uh, many of them uh, may have lost their jobs or or had their hours cut in many cases because of the COVID pandemic. Um, and what type of inspirational words would you have for our students? You know, um, because a few of them think the road is never ending and I'm never going to get through college and it's so hard to get through it. And it's understandable. What advice would you give them? The advice that I would give students would be to join organizations, be a part of HCC in general, not just being a student here. You are able to receive a lot of support, um, being able to meet staff members and everybody has their back. And that's something that I would encourage every student to do, to try be a part of all organizations. There's something for everyone. You have gaming, you have business management, you have many things that people can join. And I would definitely, um, encourage students to be a part of these organizations. And you mentioned the Honors College being a big part of your career at HCC. Um, we always talk about the Honors College here on uh, the show and I've had um, several people from the Honors College on several of our, our HCC TV shows. And what struck me is they, they talk about the experience getting to meet with the peers. Did you get to do any of the traveling or the fun trips that they were doing? Because I know they did that prior to COVID. Well, um, I don't know if you knew, but the Southeast is actually new to, the Honors College is actually new to the Southeast campus. So um, we weren't able to travel. I was so upset that that didn't right. happen. Everybody was, I mean, um, before that, the, those that were graduating were, didn't get to go either. They were supposed to study, study well, actually here in the United States, they were gonna travel to New York, I believe, um, but they didn't get to that either. So, I mean, the only experience that I had while being in the Honors was being in the lounge, I think, Many people enjoy that because you were able to talk with everyone, not just do your homework, but, you know, play games and all that stuff. Um, will you be part of the commencement that's happening virtually on Friday? Yes. So you'll be here in your name as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm very excited for that. <laughs> Well, we're excited for you. We've been talking with Leslie Trujillo. She's the uh, with the HCC Southeast Honors College graduate and also heading off to the University of St. Thomas, staying in town. Great school. Um, we appreciate you being here, Leslie. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. All right. You take care and stay safe. All right, we're moving on to Brittany. Of course, you heard, Brittany, that uh, Leslie's graduating on Friday. Did you get the rest of the commencement ceremonies uh, ironed out? It did. So text chase, Todd, is happening Thursday night, yeah. the 13th, and VAST and our main commencement will be happening Friday, May 14th. There you go. All right. So, and they'll all happen virtually. I know that because uh, we played a big role in putting those together for you. So you'll be able to see them on our website. So um, uh, Brittany, I know, worked on the artwork for a lot of this stuff. Didn't you play a big role in a lot of the artwork for the graduation this year? I, I actually worked on the VAST Academy program, so that will happen at 10 a.m. Friday morning, May 14th, and then our main commencement will happen the same day, but at 1 p.m. Okay, and the text chase, once again, is happening on Thursday. Our district Facebook page has all the information. You can also go to, uh, I believe, hccs.edu slash graduation. Is that the website? That is correct, Todd. Yep, that'll have all the information on it as well. Okay, another big thing that's happening this weekend, I believe, Brittany, the Art Car Experience. Yes, uh, I mean, we've been following this for quite some time. We got to see, um, well, as up close and personal as one can get during these times. So after years 
After many years in the making, the HTC Art Car Cooperative Ambulance, directed by Professor Ashley Hope and designed and made by our students, will be showcased at the 2021 Art Car Experience at the Orange Show. Yay! So the ambulance has been transformed into a mobile tribute to HTC's dynamic community. Thanks to the Public Safety Center of Excellence and the folks at the Emergency Medical Services Division, the process has unfolded over five semesters, so across many HTC divisions and was completed uh, May 1st. So uh, if you're interested in this uh, orange show, show huh, it's uh, happening Friday through Sunday, May 14th through 16th, and we'll post uh, a link for more information after this show. Okay, students, film students, the showcase for spring 2021 is coming up on Saturday. Film students will show their end of semester compilation screenings in TV video field production, TV production workshop, video graphics and visual effects, cinematography, lighting, documentary, and directing. 7 to 9 p.m. Saturday, May 15th. A viewing link will be provided when available. No registration is required, but if you want more information, we'll have an email in the post. Brittany, if you're getting ready to graduate, you got to know a few things. You do. So the financial aid department can help you uh, prepare for graduation, or if you've already graduated, they have resources to uh, for student loan payment. So to view more information about these resources, check out our district Facebook page or the link that will be posted after this show. Student work study program start 2021 off the right way by participating in the HCC work study program. You want more information about it? It's a pretty good deal. You get to work, earn a little bit of money outside of your scholarship or any type of uh, funds that are your lent, so you don't have to pay these back, uh, but you can get more information. It's a very, very long link, so we'll put it in the social media post after the show. All right, uh, Melba Barton, she was just on the show, I think, last week. That lady mm -hmm. does incredible work, and uh, now she's uh, talking about Be the Change. That's right. So Melba Martin and her library services team are again helping a community, our community partner, the A-Leaf Family YMCA, which recently shared uh, the HCC West Chase uh, Rotaract's Eagle Award for Program of the Year. She is asking for our help with donations to the Be the Change campaign. Uh, we'll include the email link uh, to Melba for you to help. So we'll also have um, that email to post below. She, Melba, wants to thank Dr. Shante Grace, Dr. Zachary Hodges, and Dr. Kathleen, last name I'm going to butcher, on Zivino, for helping with the YMCA's food distribution drive. And the Ailey Family YMCA uh, gave the humanitar Humanitarian of the Year Award to Dr. Desmond Lewis and Professor Melvin Hayes for their dedication to Ailey children. All right. Uh, one thing we've been mentioning for the past, it seems like forever, but really, really for the past month or so, uh, spring, our su spring, of course, we're right out of that. Summer and fall registration is open at HCC. You can register for the fall right now. We encourage you to do so. There are five ways to learn. Two of them are strictly online. Two of them are hybrid with some online and some courses in person. And then we are returning to campuses with students for in-person classes this summer and in the fall. Now the classes, uh, they'll have a number of them uh, as, they, as they need to, they'll add more classes. But the main thing to keep in mind is these classes are gonna be very small. So if you want a certain time and a certain teacher an instructor, well, you need to sign up early. Do so by going to hccs.edu slash now. Okay, Brittany, you want to meet our new friend here? Oh, my goodness. Yep. So this Look is at the precious baby. And Mila is, uh, she turns three today. She's a little poodle. And, uh, you know, we lost Peter Frampton uh, not long ago, and uh, we wanted to get a new friend for her brother, Jack Andrew, who was just in the doldrums for forever until she arrived. So she came to live with us on Saturday. Oh, so there you go. This is she is precious. I love her color. Yep. She's a beautiful little dog and she's as friendly, as sweet as can be. And it's it's like she's been living here all, all you know, ever since the beginning. Oh, that's great. I'm so happy that you all so have rescued Mila. I'm sure she's rescued you and Absolutely. your wife right back since uh, the passing of Peter Frampton. And I'm, I hope Jack Andrews is really enjoying his time with his new his new sister. He likes her a lot more than she uh, does. She doesn't 
she doesn't put up with nonsense. So <laughs> she she lets him know. But uh, he he was he told me earlier today that he was expecting us to get a larger, dumber dog that he could bully, and it turned out to be a smaller, cuter dog that is uh, more dominant over him. So he's not that happy about that. So sounds like a female dog. Yeah. So just saying. I mean, because my female dog. Um, tries to do that with me and he runs the show. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, we're going to wrap up this morning show and tomorrow. Oh yeah. We've got one of our favorite guests joining us tomorrow. <laughs> so we'll welcome uh, Richard Gosling for an academic year in review of sorts. And we had him on the show in September discussing the transition to online instruction. Now we will have a conversation about the return to campus this summer. And Thursday also equals my favorite day, uh, day four of the hostage situation. But it is virtual family fun day when we will, which we will visit the George Observatory in Fort Bend County. So besides stargazing, that giant telescope might see some alligators as well. That's right. The George Observatory, if you haven't heard about it, it's a, it's a great place. We'll talk more about them tomorrow. All right, Brittany, we're going to wrap up for today. You'll be back tomorrow. I will be back tomorrow, Todd. All right. I'll be back as well. And we will see all of you live tomorrow at 10 a.m. right here on Up to the Minute.